one of the things that uh, uh, I think really struck him was how native it, things were to him, but not totally. He, of course, has, had spent his childhood beyond Ukraine. He had left when he was a small child, but he still felt um, an affiliation, especially to Ivan the Frankius, because that was his birthplace. And so one of the things that he had asked for, because they were offering us little considerations, and what would you like to see, which institutions would you like to visit, and he said, I would like to see Ivan the Frankius, I would like to see my birthplace. And unfortunately, he saw it through a railway car window. That was the closest he got to. It was refused, and the best that his friends could do was put him on the, on the train, which was supposed to go through Ivan the Frankius at night, and they switched it to the morning train so he could at least see it through the, through the railroad car window. That was his first visit to his birthplace. Я подумала, я в музею членом, мені придасться такий курс. Тож я записалася, і а, нас було на першій класі, на першій програмі, нас було п'ятеро. Це відбувалося в General Services, здається, на четвертій підлозі. Членами того першого курсу була, був Дам'ян Гоголь, Дарія Луцію, яка тепер є заступницею Конгресу українців на Канаду. Дам'ян є, між іншим, священником і зробив магістерку на фольклорі. І Славка Басараб, Маруся Крещук, отця Крещука Доня і я. І одного разу прийшов, між іншим, Михайло Саврин, але він відтягнувся від курсу. Наші курси були дуже-дуже цікаві. Професор спочатку провадив лекції, представив, каже, ми брали, брали під увагу календарну традицію. То є Різдво, Великдень, Івана Купала. І Потім він давав також додаткові, е, говорив про скороморохів, я вже не пам'ятаю точно, що ще. Але найбільше наша конденсація була у піснях, то значить колядах. І тоді кожної лекції він нам завдавав домашнє завдання. The outstanding thing in my memory of that is probably the, uh, the fact that uh, I was allowed to hand in a piece of work which I'd collected in, in the Soviet Union because as part of my first degree in, in England I had to uh, spend time in the Soviet Union so I ended up at the Kuban State University in Krasnodar and I befriended some uh, local students there and they said to me once, well Ihor, we've got to go collect some folklore, do you want to come with us? So I said, sure, I went along with these guys, and they ended up going to a little old lady who remembers emigrate or being resettled into the Krasnodar area. And Bogdan told me, he said, he believes I'm the only person to have ever collected folklore in the Soviet Union, take, taken it out and lived to tell the tale. <laughs> the Medvitsky Swiss Chalet Club. For over 15 years, I was privileged to be a member of what I refer to as the Medvitsky Swiss Chalet Club. Barring other obligation or illness, my wife, Zirka, and I go to lunch with Professor Medvitsky to Swiss Chalet after the 9.30 a.m. liturgy at St. George's Ukrainian Catholic Church. On occasion, we had been joined by Andrew Benyuk, and by Yaroslav Federuk, but Zirka and I formed the core. What do we discuss at the Swiss Chalet? Well, uh, we do discuss uh, our personal lives, illnesses, all kinds of other such things, but that is really a rarity. In essence, there are five topics. One is, of course, Ukraine. 
politics, religion, uh, society, corruption, Russian-Ukrainian relations, Russification, reforms or lack of them, uh, Euromaidan, Russian attack on Crimea, and Eastern Ukraine. The other topic is Canada. And Bogdan loves this, politics, federal, provincial, and local, and the use of political influence in order to promote Ukrainian issues. Third topic, Ukrainian diaspora, particularly in Canada, and what it should be doing in promoting Ukraine, the Ukrainian language and culture, and preserving its identity. The fourth topic is the academic scene university politics, politics and programs, Ukrainian courses, how can you obtain students, what is the latest outrage that the university has, has done. F and the fifth one is fundraising, particularly for Ukrainian courses, the University of Alberta, folklore, and the Canadian Institute of Ukrainian Studies. For over 15 years, the Medvitsky Swiss Chalet Club provided a forum for assessing, uh, rejoicing, lamenting, reacting, planning, acting in response to events in Ukraine, the Ukrainian diaspora, the university, and fundraising. It uh, cemented a long-lasting friendship. I am personally very grateful that I was able to tap Bogdan's knowledge and wisdom and to observe his enthusiasm and his perseverance, some may even say stubbornness, in pursuing his goals and causes. These qualities were both helpful and inspiring as I tackled various problems as the director of the Canadian Institute of Ukrainian Studies. Thank you, Bogdan. If we to choose a Тут заслужену, яка присвятила себе справі українській, то є Богдан. Немає другого такого. Він є прикладом до наслідування. Всюди сущий, на все жертвенний, скрізь помагає і так далі. То є, власне, Богдан. Важко переоцінити той вклад, який професор Медвицький зробив в розвиток української громади тут. За тих 25 років, що я його знаю, він був на надзвичайно великій кількості різних, різних рад чи установ. Він був директором. І він, знову ж таки, як особа, яка має ту візію, як громада повинна розвиватися, як громада повинна а, а, утримувати себе, українська громада в Канаді.